Hi, friends. And happy holidays or Merry Christmas or whatever you'd like to celebrate this time of year. I wish you the best. I'm Gio, and welcome to my channel. Today's story is called Last Ride of the Night, and it's this year's Christmas story. I hope you enjoy. Let's get started. It's Christmas Eve. Good thing I am almost done. Call me William. My name is William King. Blame my lack of a social life on my dad. He's an army man, so I've lived in a bunch of places, including Germany, and I haven't stayed in one place long enough to make friends. Until now. Until I struck out on my own and joined the frat. That's why I drive an Uber, because I have to pay my own tuition and rent. But it's worth it. I've been in 20 different schools during my 22 years. I was born when mom and dad were 32. I'm in college, working on a bachelor's of science degree with a focus on environmental chemistry. Nobody seems to have heard of that degree. It's not like business or accounting or law or something well known. Odds of me making tons of money are out of the question. I have my sights set on marine research involving a safe, chemically efficient way to deal with environmental oil spells, like improving industrial flocculants and coagulants. A few years back, my grandparents had retired to the coast of Alabama. I was a kid, maybe ten or so, when an oil tanker had a serious problem. It had run into something, causing severe damage into two portside tanks. This ship might have been miles and miles offshore, but the oil spread everywhere. Hey kids, can we say ecological nightmare? I was staying with my grandparents when my parents went on a second honeymoon to work on their marriage. I'd been there for two days when oil started to wash ashore, as well as the dead bodies, dead fish, dead birds, dead jellyfish, even a dead cow. The beach smelled. A weird, dark, gray sludge covered the ocean. People in hazmat suits were trying their best to save anything. My grandparents got scared and called my parents to come get me. And they brought me home, back to Vegas. The oil spill changed me. I researched anything dealing with the environment, with oil spills, with ways to help contain it. I want to save lives because I saw what it did to the birds and fish. I had nightmares about all the dead creatures for weeks. I want to make a difference. I want to be important to somebody. Psychologists would say that since my dad was always overseas and my mom was always working and I was in a different place every few months, everybody was too busy to acknowledge me. Result, I want somebody to love me and somebody to love instead. I have this eternal hollow feeling inside. Holidays make it worse. Anyway, I need the degree. I need the knowledge. I need the money to graduate. Then I can make a difference, at least to the animals. Instead of a close family, I now have a lot of friends. I'm a frat boy. I don't know why the frat accepted me because I'm not good at sports, like Finn, or super smart like Albrecht, or popular like Chaz, or a cheerleader like Ben, or good-looking like Hutch, or mean like Howard, or rich like Anders, or a dancer like Jason, or a leader like Solomon, or a card shark magician like Grin, or a hyper business major like Twitch, or even a smoothie-making legend like Dane. I'm William, Mr. Average. My claim to fame? I run the barbecues. I drive a beat-up five-year-old silver Honda CRV hybrid, bought used, and spend my time when I'm not at the frat house or at class, shuttling people back and forth. I'm an Uber driver, set my own hours, pay my own bills, live my own life. Relationships. I told my folks years ago that I was gay. We went out to dinner. We talked. Dad shrugged and said, thanks for trusting him. Mom gave me a little kiss and asked to meet my boyfriend. Life went back to normal in seconds. Long and short, I'm not in a relationship. Usually, I'm fine with that. Tonight, I'm not. Christmas Eve. 
everybody is at a party or going to a party. My folks took a Christmas cruise. Everybody is with family and friends. Everybody believes today is the best thing since potato chips. Except for me. It's only another lonely Christmas. Time for one last ride before going back to the almost empty frat house. A notification popped up on my phone. Somebody wants an Uber, and I'm the closest to their location. His name is Chase Heath. I confirm that I'm on my way, and it only takes seven minutes to get there. Halifax Apartments. Cheap, student apartments, located about a mile from the campus. A dozen buildings, three stories tall, made of a yellowish brick. Several balconies have Christmas lights blinking on them. It's the kind of place that says, Look, Mom, I've moved out. Chase waited out front. My age. Dirty blonde hairstyle, nice. Blue eyes, a nice tan. Cute, too. He wore casual khaki pants, a dark tweed jacket, beige shirt. He carried a wine bottle with a Christmas bow on it, and he stared at his phone. His brows furrowed together as if he were worried about something. I pulled up next to him and lowered the passenger window. Chase Heath, I'm William. Call for an Uber? He glanced at my car and climbed in the rear seat. I wasn't sure you guys ran on Christmas Eve. Some of us need the money. A quick check of the destination, and I'm off. He's not quite going to Henderson, but it is a residential area. A ten-minute drive, unless we run into a Christmas slowdown. Heading to a fun party, I asked. He sighed and stared out the window. I wish. Family. You don't seem very excited, I asked. Have you ever noticed that Christmas brings out the worst in your family, he said. Do tell, I asked. Mom is so busy trying to make things perfect that she yells at everyone. Dad gets annoyed and locks himself in the garage. When my sister and her husband arrive with their two kids, my aunt goes into overdrive, oh my cute little darlings mode. When she stops spoiling the kids, she interrogates me non-stop. Chase, why can't you get a better job? When are you going to get married? When are you going to have kids? She's like that all night. Sounds like a nightmare, I said. Then my brother and his wife show up, always an hour late. They believe in natural planning. They have six kids all under the age of eight. Since I'm single, I get the privilege of becoming the babysitter while all the other adults get drunk. Name a Christmas movie. I can recite it. I have seen it with the kids so many times. If I don't babysit, Mom yells, What's wrong with you? Your siblings need a break. My sister yells, Don't be so selfish. They haven't seen you since Thanksgiving. And my aunt says, It's good experience for when you get married. And then my brother yells, Chase is single, so what's the problem? Or his wife says, Chase, you don't mind watching the kids next weekend so we can have an overnighter at a hotel. It's like this every holiday. I hate holidays. Sounds like a headache waiting to happen, I said. Could I channel a little bit of the inner Chaz and hit on a complete stranger? Why not? Chase sighed, setting the wine bottle on the back seat. I've had a headache since my family started texting me tonight. I turned around to face him, and our eyes connected. Have you ever met someone and know that there is something between you, like you've met before, like you were best friends or lovers in a past life? A spark sizzles between you, and suddenly everything changes. That just happened to me. Chase paused. Did he feel something too? I'm crazy. Chase is just another ride. I'll never see him again unless I do something in the next ten minutes. My heart beat fast, and I said, So, can you be a little late? What do you mean, he asked. It's Christmas Eve. I haven't had a break tonight, and I don't have anything to do, and you don't want to visit your family. Let me buy you dinner. I know a place that makes great french fries, I said. You're asking me on a date, on Christmas Eve. We've known each other for 
Five minutes, he replied. That's what makes it fun, I said. He sort of chuckled and said, I'm sorry, but I don't even remember your name. William, and since you haven't said no, can I take that as a yes? I asked. He almost smiled. Will I regret this? Probably, but I promise to drop you off as soon as we're done eating, I said. I took him to Gordon's Gourmet Burgers, home of the nuclear cholesterol bomb, and we ordered mile-high cheeseburgers and a fry platter to share, two chocolate shakes, and some casual conversation. We took a booth inside, and Chase told me about his degree, accounting, and I told him about mine. Thirty minutes after we started eating, Chase's phone rang. Christmas music sounded through the phone, and somebody yelled, and then a baby cried, and then some kid said, I want to open my presents. Yeah, Mom, Chase said. His mom was loud, almost yelling, and she said, It's chaos already. Your brother and his family are here, and the new neighbors brought their baby, and your sister's kids won't stop running around looking for their presents. I need you to watch all the kids so I can get the food ready. When will you get here? Chase rolled his eyes and looked at me. He mouthed, Doing anything later? I smiled and whispered, Let's make the most of Christmas. Chase quickly bit his lower lip and grinned. Mom, if I even make it, I'm going to be very late. You have to make it. We need you to watch the kids, his mom yelled. Chase's smile was perfect. Mom, I'm on a date. What? It's Christmas Eve. Nobody goes on a date on Christmas. Your family needs you, she yelled. William and I want some time to ourselves. I'll talk to you later, he said. Her voice rose a dozen decibels when she shrieked, William, I don't know a William. Who is he? My boyfriend. Bye, Mom, Chase said, grinning. He hung up. I chuckled and bit into a ketchup-covered french fry. Boyfriend? Now it's official. I'll pay for this tomorrow when Mom screams at me, but it's worth having a little bit of peace tonight, he said. Chase's phone rang again. It was quiet for like ten seconds, maybe? It was a woman. His sister, I guessed. Is it true you're on a date? Yes, sis, Chase said. She scoffed and almost yelled. Who is going to watch the kids? You don't expect us to. How dare he think he's more important than we are? Chase, get here immediately and stop acting selfish, a man said. For a minute... All they did was complain about Chase. Chase didn't even say anything. I got annoyed. I'm going to regret this, but I took his phone and said, Take responsibility and stop shoving your kids on my boyfriend. How dare you backtalk me? Is this William? The woman yelled. Time for you to act like a mom, I said. Your boyfriend is rude. Chase, you don't have a say in any of this. How do you expect us to get drunk and relax with the kids around? The man said. I took hold of Chase's hand and spoke. Let me give you some advice. Hire a babysitter because you don't want to take care of your kids. Newsflash, nobody else does either. Merry Christmas. Did you hear that? William is calling me a bad mother, his sister yelled. You have no right to judge us. Chase, get over here right now, because if you don't, you've ruined the party, the man yelled. Chase tried to keep a straight face, but ended up with a huge smile. Somehow, he pulled it together and said, I'm spending Christmas with William, together and privately. An older woman got on the phone. Chase's mother but we always spend this time of year as a family. It's tradition. We have a lot of fun. Don't turn your back on the people that love you. Sorry, Mom. Getting dumped with all the hyper-screaming spoiled kids only makes it fun for you. Then you make me do dishes and serve everybody. I've hated Christmas for years. This year, take care of your own damn party. Because I'll be spending time with my new boyfriend, Chase said. 
How selfish of you, letting us down on Christmas, spoiling Christmas for your family. You're an entitled jerk, the brother yelled. Chase paused a second, letting what he heard sink in. Then he said, Wow, no wonder I hate spending time with family. You won't see or hear from me for a long time. Goodbye. Chase ended the call and put the phone in his pocket. We both laughed. Known each other for five minutes and now I'm your boyfriend and arguing with your family. You work fast, I said. Chase shrugged. Sorry, first thing I could think of. I gave him a sexy smile and said, Does that mean we get to do boyfriend kind of things? He chuckled, laughed, and dipped a french fry into some ketchup. It had been a long time since a guy fed me french fries. Good thing Chase was my last ride of the night. After we finished eating, we drove down the strip. Vegas and London have an unusual landmark. They call them giant observation wheels, but let's call it like it is, a Ferris wheel. The London Eye was only 443 feet tall. The Vegas Ferris wheel is 550 feet tall, the tallest in America, one of the tallest in the world. For a while, it was the tallest. The Vegas High Roller. Somebody must have canceled their order, because when we ordered tickets, we got tickets. The only slot available were the happy hour tickets. We drove down Las Vegas Boulevard, finding a parking plaza not too far from the Link Promenade, home of the High Roller. Once I parked, we walked a short distance to the Link Hotel and then to the King of Ferris Wheels. A full parking lot was in front of it, but I'm glad I didn't pull into it. Cars crowded every spot. Welcome to Christmas in Vegas. There are almost as many people here as at New Year's. The high roller had a promenade filled with stores and eateries, and we passed a dozen people dressed as Santa. Santa hats and angel halos must be in style because everybody wore them. The support struts that held up this architectural marvel were massive. Standing underneath the high roller was awe-inspiring. Fifty stories of lights and motion and a band playing deck the halls. The Ferris wheel was decorated in reds and greens and Chase looked up. Wonder filled his eyes. I've lived in Vegas all my life. I saw them build this, but I've never rode it, he said. I don't know when it happened, but we were holding hands. My loneliness had gone into hiding. I was happy. Chase was happy. Soon, the night would be over and I would be alone again. We snapped selfies of us and posted them, and then took pictures of the shops and Santa and the high roller and posted them. The lights on the high roller started blinking in time with the music. Jingle bells. The beginning of the Link Promenade and High Roller Christmas Show. The world became magic. Lights flashed and strobed against the dark sky, and Christmas music serenaded us. I don't know which one of us smiled more. I'm glad we came, boyfriend, I said, flirting just a little bit. I didn't feel lonely anymore. And by the way Chase smiled, I think he had forgotten about his family. When it was time, we walked up to the attendant, and he directed us to the passenger module, and we climbed on board. It was bigger than I thought, with a full bar to the side of the cabin, several seats that nobody sat in and a bartender. We ordered champagne and stood by the plexiglass window and stared over Vegas. When the Ferris wheel was at the very top, fifty stories up, I clutched Chase's hand and he held mine. The vertigo in my stomach made me queasy. Nothing could describe that view. The city lights stretched out for miles. It took a moment, but I spotted the college. I live over there, I said. Where? he asked. The frat house. Do you want to crash there tonight? I asked. You mean with you? He asked. I blushed. A one night stand on Christmas? What was I doing? I'm not like this. But tonight, I didn't want to be alone. I leaned up close and whispered, We have a huge hot tub. And tomorrow morning, I'll make us breakfast. Or I can drop you off with your family. Right now. Choices, choices. Spend the night with you in the hot tub, or spend the night with my family. The hot tub wins, he said. 
He looked at me, something intimate in his eyes. My cheeks warmed. His smile was delicate. We sipped our champagne and enjoyed the view of Vegas. We could see forever. I must have posted a dozen pictures of us, of the view, of the high roller, of us. Chase did the same. Sometime during the ride, he placed an arm about my shoulders and whispered, I'll make us chocolate chip pancakes for breakfast. I'll fry the bacon, I whispered back. His phone rang, and by his frown, I could guess who called. Chase answered, holding his phone between us so I could hear. Chase's family spoke first, more specifically, his mom. Are you trying to destroy me? Someone has to watch the kids, plate the food, and nobody has time to wash the dishes. I'm supposed to be hosting the party, but it's chaos. Stop being a whiny brat and get back here and help your family. No, Mom. Now you know what my holidays are like. Deal with it yourself. I'm on a date. Check out this picture. Chase said, hung up, and sent a selfie of us standing in front of the incredible view. We had only met a couple of hours ago. We were still strangers, yet somehow we connected. It scared me. It excited me. I leaned in close, and we clinked our glasses together. We shared a look. Chase swallowed and licked his lips. Something intense flashed through his eyes. The same look must have flashed through mine. The warmth, the alcohol, the sudden happiness, the intimacy. The kiss just happened. He took a deep breath, his eyes yearning. I parted my lips, only a little. We kissed again, but it was deeper. Something about it spoke a little about the loneliness inside me. We set our glasses down and in front of all of Vegas. Our kiss became an electric moment. If anyone noticed us, they didn't say anything. We separated, both of us panting, and locked eyes. His whisper was almost a plead. Did you feel it too? I did, I murmured. My heart sped up. I held him tight and felt his excitement. We stepped to the side of the cabin to have a little privacy. And when I kissed him again, I stretched his shirt just enough to work on his neck. Chase took a selfie and quickly posted it. I wasn't like this. I've never been bold like this before. We were in public, and the things I was doing, the way I was feeling. I needed this man, this stranger, like I had never needed someone in my life. I didn't care that people saw us. I didn't care that we had only met. I didn't care that I knew nothing about him. I can't explain it, but I needed him. The longing in Chase's eyes, the intense desire. I'm sure Chase felt the same way. Was I ready for this? Was he? We backed away from each other. He told me about his dreams of being an author, but his family made him go into accounting. He hated accounting. I told him about my dreams of being a marine chemist, of developing better ways to clean massive oil spills. I told him about my lack of family and being alone, of wanting to make a difference, even if it was for the ocean. Chase told me about his feeling alone even though he had a family. They didn't understand him, refused to see him as a grown man, refused to see him as little more than a convenient babysitter. He wanted to tell stories that made a difference in people's lives. Though we were different, we had the same loneliness, the same pain, the same hurt, and we held each other, whispering our thoughts. Can someone fall in love so fast? Can someone find a kindred soul by accident? Our ride lasted 30 minutes, and we were working on our second glass of champagne. When the ride was over, we wandered through the promenade, through the shops and sites. Even though the hour was late, many places were open. A group of carolers sang, We wish you a Merry Christmas, in different languages. A band, the Glitter Bombs, played cover songs for various Christmas sets. They sang the original Silent Night, a cappella in German, and I didn't understand a single word, 
but it moved me. Chase wiped the wetness below my eye and smiled. So much music, so much sound, so many lights. We eventually wandered back to my silver car and drove to the frat house. Christmas Eve, only a couple of guys were around. Once again, Chase's phone rang. We're about to open presents. Won't you return to be with us? No, sis. Find your own babysitter. I quit. Is your boyfriend more important than we are? She said. Chase looked at me, slightly nodding. Yes, spending time with William is more important. Then the screaming began. The whole night has fallen apart because you are on a date. How dare you think of yourself? How do you expect us to enjoy ourselves? The kids are destroying the house. It's all your fault. I'm glad I'm not there, Chase said. If you don't get over here in ten minutes, I'm going to. She screamed, to which Chase replied, Block. Guess what he did immediately after. Howard and Twitch sat on the living room couch, next to the large Christmas tree. The tree was just like the frat. Mismatched lights, random playing cards, condoms, strung popcorn, random socks. It was as weird as we were. Both Howard and Twitch pretended to watch something on the flat screen when everybody knew they were watching us. Anybody else around? I asked. Howard, our resident boxer and tough guy, saluted me with his beer and said, Just the effing elves who don't want to be social. Who's this? Chase, the boyfriend, Chase said. Any beer left in the fridge? I asked. Twitch was our hyper-business guru. He always spoke fast, and he said, Don't touch the German brew. That's Albrecht's, but he flew to Germany a couple of days ago, so he might never know if you take a couple. Albrecht is an effing genius. He'll know you stole it, and since he fixes our computers, best not to annoy him, Howard said. I led Chase to the kitchen and we leaned against the counter, eyes only for each other. Our kiss began there. Would it be wrong to give in to our lust? Would it be wrong to banish the loneliness for a night? Chaz had ten or more one-night stands a month. Did I want that? Did I want this to only be sex between strangers? Yes. And no. Chase had something special about him. I wanted this to be something more than just a fling for one night. Could this last? My brain began working, and an idea formed. A strange, mixed-up, terrifying bowling ball of an idea. I pulled back and smiled. Are you up for something really crazy? It will make Christmas different and special, and like nothing we've ever done before. His look was almost scared, but something daring crossed his eyes, and he said, Sure. I'm sure he expected something kinky, but I said, We fill up the car, hop on I-15, drive for four hours, and have Christmas morning in Santa Monica, right next to the pier. Chase's eyes widened, and his mouth made a weird mumble before he smiled. I didn't bring a swimsuit. Twitch jumped into the doorway, playing air guitar. He shouted, Road trip. I call shotgun. Howard was next to him and said, This is the frat house. We have tons of effing everything. Half of it we don't even know where it came from. You said swimsuit. We have swimsuits. If it's female related, it was left over after one of Chaz's dates, Twitch yelled. We'll need snacks. None of that hippie vegan crap Eddie keeps around. I want effing cheese buffs and, Howard started to say. I rolled my eyes and said, You guys are coming? On our date? Of course. Try and stop me, Howard said, flexing his arm and making a fist. Twitch fell against the counter, an intense look of horror in his eyes. A date? Does that mean I have to sit in the back seat with Howard so you can two can sit up front and hold hands? I call shotgun, Chase said. Since it's my car... I'm the driver, I said. Howard folded his arms and stared at Twitch with one of his meanest looks. Let's be effing clear. 
You are not my type. I am not holding your hand. And if you try and kiss me, your nose will be flat for the rest of your life. Understand? Twitch raised his hands in surrender. I'll bring the pretzels and beer. Just don't hit me. Chase checked his phone. I'm running out of power. Do you guys got a charger? Twitch found a phone charger among the mess of cords. Well, I found a spare clean swimsuit for Chase. Chase's phone rang. What? He yelled. You've had your fun. Come back now. You have to help us clean up, his mom said. What about my brother and sister? What about the neighbors? What about all the kids? Chase said. They left. And I have to clean this up myself. You didn't help us with the party, so you have to help me with the cleanup. I didn't make the mess. I didn't come to the party. You guys yelled and insulted me because I didn't want to be used and then treated me horribly. What makes you think I want to spend any time with any of you? His mom shouted, You can't mean that. If you call me again, I will block you. Excuse me, Mom. I have plans with my boyfriend, Chase said, and hung up. In 15 minutes, after a quick stop at a 24-hour gas-and-go, we bought gas and snacks and were on the road. It's weird, Chase said. What's weird, Howard said. Chase had an odd smile when he said, Until tonight, I didn't realize how much I hated being with my family. Does that make me a bad person? Howard stared out the window and softly said, At least you have a family to hate. What do you mean? I asked. Howard didn't respond. The trip to L.A. was easy. Leave Vegas, aim your car down I-15, and hit cruise control for a little more than four hours. The Christmas traffic was a lot lighter than on regular days. We made good time and arrived in L.A. just after three in the morning. And with a little help from our friend Google, we parked at the Santa Monica beach just after 4 a.m. We spread a blanket out on the sand and looked at the ocean. The air was cool and smelled of popcorn and beer. A few dozen people lounged on the beach. We weren't the only crazy people out here. Twitch's phone rang. Grin? Twitch put it on speaker. Do you know what time it is? Grin chuckled. Please. We both know you were already up. How's California? How did you know where we were? I asked. It's in the cards. Anyway, odd note on the door for somebody named Chase. We have a Chaz. Unless it's one of the seniors or an alumni, I don't know a Chase. Somebody have a visitor? Grin said. I'm Chase. How would anybody know I was there? Read it, please. Grin cleared his throat as if he were about to read a thesis. In his best British accent, he read, Chase, come home right now, and we will forgive you. Signed, Mom and Dad. How would they effing know you were at the frat house? Howard said. I think you have a spy, Grin said. Me and my boyfriend are turning our phones off for the rest of the night. Maybe tomorrow, too. Good luck. Chase pulled out his phone and sifted through his apps. I must have a tracker, but I don't know what to look for. Howard took the phone and listed all active apps. He sorted through them and paused. Found it. I spy. Parents use it to keep track of their kid's location, and it's password protected so kids can't turn it off. Who gave you the phone? Mom and Dad, for Christmas a couple of years ago, Chase said, rolling his eyes. A sneaky way to spy on you, Twitch said. Anything we can do about it? I asked. Call and get the passcode, Chase said. Have a dealer reinitialize your phone, or find a big hammer, Twitch said. Get revenge. Find the nearest long distance trucker and hide the effing phone on his rig, Howard said. There is one inconvenient thing about this app that a lot of parents don't realize. It also lets kids track their parents so they can find them if they get separated. I'm buying myself a new phone. First thing tomorrow. How can I track my parents? Chase asked. Howard tapped the app and said, Like this. The app expanded, showing a Google Street Map. It had a dot showing the phone's current location. 
and two more dots just outside LA on I-15. My parents are on their way here. Why? Chase asked. Twitch pursed his lips and finally said, Obsessive compulsive helicopter parents who are on a mission to save their kid's life, but ruin it in the process. I know them well. The pier was dark and off limits. The dark silhouette of the Ferris wheel and the Pacific Park amusement park were quiet against the soft rustle of the waves. Quiet. Peaceful. Chase lay back, staring at the sky. Is this a dream? Tonight, I meet an Uber driver, got in an argument with my family, go out on a date on the high roller. We make out, meet said Uber driver's friends at the frat house, go on a road trip to California, and now I'm at the Santa Monica Pier sitting on the beach? Am I really doing this? I mean, I'm at the beach for Christmas. Welcome to the effing frat, Howard said. It's not the craziest thing we've done. Remember when Chaz brought that girl by? Twitch said. Which time? I asked. The one who slapped him when she saw all of us in the living room? Twitch said. Some girl slaps him every effing weekend when she finds out she's only a notch on his belt, Harold said. What about that time Anders lost his suit in the hot tub? I said. Or the crazy night when Jason's grandfather tried to kidnap him, Twitch said. We told the story to Chase before we laid back and watched the sky. The four of us slept on the beach, snoozing until sunrise. About 6.30, the sun rose behind us. In the distance was some classic rock song, and somewhere kids screamed with delight. We woke Christmas morning to a lightning sky and quiet conversation. Many people had gathered, some were still asleep on the sand. A couple played in the waves, and a couple of surfers in black bodysuits tried their luck. No sign of Chase's parents. Surfing on Christmas. Best way to start a day. A peaceful morning. Even Howard hadn't started swearing yet. The beach was calm. An old guy wandered around with a metal detector. Every couple of minutes, he sifted through the sand and found something. Seagulls squawked above, and horns screamed in the distance. Barefoot. I took Chase's hand, and with the sand squishing through our toes, we wandered down the beach on the edge of the surf. We talked about the beach, about Christmas, about the high roller, and Chase asked, Be truthful. Am I just another notch on your belt? I gave his hand a firm squeeze and said, I haven't had time for a boyfriend, so I don't even have a belt. I'm not like Chaz, who hooks up with someone new every weekend. I think when I find someone, I'll be with them for years. You? My longest has been about six months. Lately, I've been thinking about settling down. But would it be wrong to not want kids? He said. I paused, pulling him close. Would it be wrong to be yourself? I don't know. I've only met you last night, but I don't want to let you go, he said. Though the air was cool, we changed into our suits and goofed off in the water. Laughing, screaming, Howard found a bucket and dumped water on my head. Chase burst out laughing. About ten, we wandered back to our things and enjoyed the sun. It was the first time I'd seen Twitch's tattoos. I was about to ask him about them when Chase had a wicked smile and whispered, Kiss me like you want to embarrass my parents. Because you do, Howard muttered. Sometimes I do like I'm told. One wet and sloppy and loud kiss coming up. I included a ooh baby just for good measure. Two shadows momentarily blocked the light. An older couple, probably early fifties. The man had the same look about his eyes and nose as Chaz did. The woman clasped her hands together and her eyes darted to her husband. Neither were smiling. Mom, Dad, Chase said, and we rolled away from each other. Hi, I'm the rude boyfriend, I said. Chase was one step shy of yelling at them. You didn't have to come all this way, but since you're here, give me the passcode to I spy and stay out of my life, Chase said, his voice turning bitter. Howard had the wickedest grin on his face. Twitch looked from person to person and said, Maybe we should leave them alone? Howard rolled into a sitting position and said, 
not on your life. Twenty bucks says Dad starts yelling first. Twenty, it's the mom, Twitch said. They shook hands. Maybe some introductions, Chase's mom said, glancing from Chase to me. Chase pointed at each of us. The hyper guy is Twitch, the big guy is Howard. We're still teaching him manners, Twitch said, and quickly scooted away from Howard's murderous glare. That's my boyfriend, William, Chase said. Is that why you were at the frat house? Chase's dad asked. Howard snickered, saying, Not a frat house, but the frat house. Of course, we live there. We're the frat boys. Well, a few of them, Twitch said. Along with Solomon, Anders, Dane, Hugh, Jason, Hutch, Grin, Howard said. Twitch laughed. Good thing Grin's not here. He'd have you checking your wallets. Howard countered on his fingers and said, Who am I forgetting? DJ, Eddie, Finn, Chaz, Ben, us, Niles, but he's kind of an honorary frat boy. He did save Jason's life, Twitch said. You're right, he's one of us. Can't forget about Albrecht, Howard continued. Are you going to name them all? We'll be here all night, I said. Chase sat up, sitting cross-legged. These are my friends. And family, one for all, Twitch said. And all for the party, Howard said. Frat boys, they said as one. Oorah, I said. Chase smiled and gestured to the beach. Pull up some sand, Mom and Dad. This is what Christmas should be. Relaxed, stress-free, and surrounded by the people who mean something. His mother winced. She had an awkward look as she said, Chase, we were hoping we could talk to you privately. Whatever you want to say, you can say it in front of my boyfriend, and I don't think you're going to get Howard or Twitch to leave, Chase said. Unless we run out of beer, Howard said. Beer for breakfast, Chase's dad said. Have some pretzels then, Twitch said. I turned to Chase's mom and dad and said, Nice to meet you. Perhaps you could explain why you bugged your son's phone and followed him to Santa Monica. That's a five-hour trip. Because somebody got lost, Twitch said, chuckling. I didn't respond but stared at Chase's parents. Chase did as well. Let me get this right. You guys scream at me, dump everybody's kids on me so you can go drinking. You insult me, ruin every major holiday for the last few years. You bug my phone. Now you stalk me. His father looked at the ground before saying, It's not stalking. We only wanted to talk to you. Twitch nodded and said, Stalking. What do you think, Howard? I asked. If it smells like rotten cheese, looks like rotten cheese, makes you puke like rotten cheese, then the effing cheese is rotten, Howard said. Chase slowly nodded. Wisdom according to Howard. Mom, Dad, I'm not going to apologize to anybody, and I'm not going to another family party. Family don't treat family like that. I've had it with you guys. Chase, since you're dating William, our barbecue master, you're part of the effing frat boys. We're your family, Howard said. Twitch rolled his eyes and said, God, we are one seriously screwed up family. On the bright side, Dane makes great smoothies. Hell yeah, I said. Chase almost smiled. Well, Mom and Dad, go ahead. Yell at me. Scream at me. Tell me how selfish I am. Tell me you raised me better. Tell me how ashamed you are. I don't care anymore. After the way you and the rest of the family have been treating me, I'm going no contact. Merry Christmas. I'm done with this family. Chase's dad stared at the ocean, his face expressionless. I think we've screwed up. Chase's mom held her husband's hand and said, We came to say we're sorry. Let's find a diner and celebrate the holiday with breakfast. Our way of saying we're sorry. Bring your boyfriend and your friends our treat. Twitch rolled his eyes and said, If only Grin were here to draw you a card. Check your wallet, just in case. Chase opened his wallet and frowned. It held a paper clip. I squeezed Chase's hand and said, Grin must be slipping. Chase took the paper clip, straightening it out. Maybe not. Effing Grin did it again. How does he do it? Howard yelled, and then he laughed. 
I'd never heard Howard laugh before. Then I understood why. Chase took my hand and gave me a little smile that promised something more. Still holding my hand, he pulled me to my feet, and he turned to his parents, saying, No, Mom and Dad, I am incredibly annoyed at you and at the rest of the family. What have you done, any of you, to earn my forgiveness? Nothing. Chase removed his phone's cover and inserted the paperclip into the side. The SIM card popped out. Chase put it in his pocket. Chase tossed his phone, and it landed at his dad's feet, and then Chase resumed speaking. Howard is right. The cheese is rotten. Go back to Vegas, Mom and Dad, and don't expect me to call you. I'm not giving you my new number. Today, I'm spending the day with William, and maybe a lot longer. What's in your wallet, William? Twitch asked. I opened my wallet, and guess what I found? I always kept a condom in there. Chase's parents blushed. And then Chase and I walked away. Suddenly, I had the feeling this wasn't a one-night stand, but something that would last a long, long time. I squeezed Chase's hand. And suddenly, I wasn't alone. I was happy. The next year, both Chase and I were invited to his parents' Christmas celebration, but we declined. For my final semester, I was interning at the Atlantic Institute of Oceanography. That's on the southern coast of South Carolina. And Chase, my husband, had switched majors to English and was finalizing his novel. Give him an internet connection and he can work anywhere. He graduates the year after me. We're spending this Christmas in the Bahamas. It's our honeymoon. And we've Zoom called all the people most important to us. Howard and Twitch and Grin and Chaz. And all the rest of the crazy people we live with. They're our family. Our frat family. The end. Merry Christmas, everybody. Or whichever holiday you'd like to celebrate. And thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Peace.